Reddit, what is your most cringe story about someone who had has a crush on you? When I was in high school, I was in Spanish class with a girl who had a crush on me. I loved this class because I had it with a few friends, and the teacher was cool and I made a lot of jokes. I was unpopular until my junior year, so this was all new to me. So, one day, I went to class, and was joking around and spanishing it all up like I typically did. Then this girl who I had talked to but wasn't really friends with, had a note passed to me. She sat across the room, so like a dozen people were involved in passing this note to me. I opened the folded paper and read, Are you going to see the new Star Wars movie? I had seen the old ones, but wasn't really interested in them that much, I've rewatched them since then and love them. But at this point I didn't like the movies, so I said, no. And gave her a look like she was stupid for even asking me such a ridiculous question. Everyone looked at her and apparently knew what was going on. She kinda slumped down in her chair and said, never mind, really sheepishly. It wasn't until after college that I figured out that she was trying to ask me out on a date, and I rejected her in front of the entire class. I feel horrible now. I totally would have gone with her, she was pretty cool. Ladies, you have to spoon feed us when you're interested. T-L-E-R, Leia, I love you. Han, I didn't know. Was walking with an ex through a park. Bent down on one knee to tie my shoelace, and heard her gasp and say, yes. I looked up confused, then both of us looked at each other horrified when we realized what just happened. Good reason to make the switch to Velcro. In year 8, before the time of texting, a boy who liked me gave a girl on my bus a letter for me. It was a letter confessing his love for me. Written entirely in 50 cent lyrics. The closing line being, I love ya like a fat kid love cake, you know my style I'll say anything to make ya smile. Close friend tells me, she has had very strong feelings for me for the past 3 years. She tells me this a couple days before we graduate college. I didn't feel the same way about her. According to a mutual friend, her original plan was to romantically profess her love on the day of our graduation in front of all of our family and friends. High school, 14 years old, had a huge crush on this girl who was in a few of my classes. One day I was leaving science class, and someone behind me says my name. I turn around to see my crush and her friend. Her friend had spoken to me. She continues. Hey did I tell you it was crush's birthday today? I look at her, look at crush, who looks nervous, and I think three things. 1. I've never spoken to you before, of course you didn't tell me it's her birthday. 2. Hey it's my birthday in a few days. 3. Oh my god. Crush is right there looking at me. I quickly say, no. Turn on my heel and leave. Only realized a couple weeks later she was probably going to invite me to a party or something. Everyone I've told this story to confirms that suspicion. T-L-E-R, girl I liked all through high school probably liked me too. I once wrote a love poem about the girl I liked. Apparently, the complexities of the human brain, unraveled by your long blonde mane, is not a line that attracts women. I don't know if I'm more embarrassed by the rejection or the awful poetry. My work started using a program that began hiring ex-cons. One of the guys hired through this program started showing interest in me. I wasn't attracted to him at all, and made it clear to him, repeatedly. Long story short, he got fired three months later, but kept coming around the store to visit his friends. I go out to my car to read during lunch like normal, and there's a creepy metal and mesh flower on my windshield. I look around the parking lot to see who could have left it, and see no one. I throw it into a grassy area and forget about it. I read through my lunch hour and go inside, and no sooner than I clock in, I hear a page that I have a phone call. It's him. All he says is, you look so pretty when you're reading. I hung up immediately and told the manager. He kept doing more things that escalated the creepiness. I ended up getting an emergency restraining order against him. When I found out he added me as a emergency contact with his parole officer. I didn't even know him. A girl tried to kiss me, and I wouldn't let her. She kept asking why, and I eventually had to tell her the real reason was that she looked like my Spanish teacher, and it freaked me out a bit. 
she got pissed off, tried to storm off, and walked smack bang into a lamp post, pretty much knocked herself clean out. I also had a girl tell me she went bulimic for me, as if that was going to win me around. Went to a guy's house to do a project in high school. It involved the internet, and while he sat next to me I tried to navigate to Google. Unfortunately, the address bar autofilled and took me to his last Google search, page 2 of results for my name. Every link had been clicked. We both just sat in silence. He could have played it off by saying, I had to make sure you weren't a murderer before letting you into my house. He would have still been creepy but you'd be the suspected murderer. I like this girl. Good start, right? We'll call her Jenny. So, we were in high school, and I knew that she had a thing for me. I had a thing for her too. She's pretty hot, but problem was, her ex-boyfriend was my best friend. We'll call him Jimmy. So, she used to date Jimmy, and I mean bro code, so no can do. So I ignore it, but guess what should happen? Jimmy ends up telling me one day, that he asked my ex, with whom I was hung up over for roughly 3 years, before finally getting over. We'll call her Janice. On a date. Not being the type of guy to pick fights, I gritted my teeth and said, hey, good for you man. Well, I was kind of miserable about them, but the side effect was that me and Jenny started talking a lot more. A lot more. Like we'd give each other long. Definitely, more than friends hugs, every time we saw each other, and all the usual high school flirtation strategies. So, Jenny and I were hitting it off pretty well, as more than friends but not quite friendly friends yet, and it was a good time for me, but remember how I said, I wasn't the type to pick fights? Well that demeanor comes bundled with the package of, never take initiative for anything, ever. So, as you may guess, I never asked Jenny out. I never did anything besides give her a hug and have our usual conversations. So Christmas break rolls around, and that's all merry, but once school started back up, I noticed Jenny didn't talk to me. I said hi, she said hi, but no hugs, no conversation, no long meaningful like contact. I wondered what had happened. Well actually I had figured it out pretty quick, it's what happened to every single girl I got even kinda involved with in high school, I pushed them away because they thought I wasn't interested in them. Like I said, I never took initiative. So Jenny is platonic status towards me now, and since I never stand up and fix problems, I let this situation fester and get worse, until the point where we never even made eye contact anymore. Well, that's good and all. But problem was, I still carried my feelings for her. So, with the only form of action I could take being passive, I decide to chance a run-in with her in the hallway. I scope out her classes, wasn't hard since we had walked to all of each other's classes the semester before, and find a place to intersect our paths. I figured, if I did that and she saw me, she would initiate the conversation and be flirty, so I wouldn't have to do it. Sounds realistic, right? Well this carried on for more than just one day. In fact, it carried on for 3 months. Almost every day I would pass Jenny in the hallway, pretending I didn't notice her, hoping she would say hi. I skipped some days just to not overdo it. It became so bad, that sometimes I actually ended up waiting an hour and a half after school, and would make up an excuse to be there for when she got out of her musical rehearsal. I would follow her tweets on what she was doing and chance of beating there, I would accidentally text her deep and thought provoking messages that made me sound mysterious. Yes. I was basically stalking this girl, and she knew it. How did she know it? Because one April day of some year, I was crossing paths with her during one of my chance encounters. It was one of my two paths that I actually had to go way out of my way to see her. Turns out, Jenny had done her research and found out that I didn't need to be walking anywhere close to where I was, especially not for 3 months. Her class was on the top floor of our school, the arts and crafts hallway that only had 2 active classes that year, one of which was at the very beginning of the school day, and I had no art classes. So, why was I there? We passed each other in the crowded hallway. Just as we got to the point where we would leave each other's peripherals, I took a glance, sure that she wouldn't notice me looking at her. I noticed that her face was turning towards me. 
I quickly glanced forward, intent on keeping me calm and collected, and I don't care act. I heard my name. Sharpen. Did I hear something? Oh well, I'll keep walking, because I don't really care is the vibe I was trying to give off. So I kept walking. Sharpen. I halted. Turning around, I saw Jenny glaring right at me. Her snap had attracted attention from the fellow hallway marchers. She had clenched fists, and if the human body were capable of blowing steam out of its ears in anger, she would have done so. Oh hi, Jenny. I didn't see. She interrupted me with a voice that, while not screaming, was loud and sharp enough to give off the demeaning tone she was trying to achieve. Don't you ever follow me again. Since you know my schedule so well, try avoiding me from now on. She gracefully, yet firmly turned on her heel and marched onwards. The lanyard and ID I was twirling on my index finger fell to the ground. I was speechless. Bracing the whispers of judgment and the blanket of shame falling down upon me, I gathered my belongings, and tried to walk to my next class with whatever shreds of pride I had left. I promptly failed. Never again did I see Jenny in the hallways. So yeah, I don't know about whoever eats that, but I cringe every time I remember it. TLDR, a relationship went stale to the point that I became a stalker, the victim stopped me in the hallway, and told me off with everyone around. Short messaging story. This was at a time when mobile internet hadn't caught on yet, but the SMS services were at its peak, and they were cheap in our parts. Me and my then girlfriend exchanged shitloads of SMSs. It became kinda evident that our relationship was ending. We formalized it much later, but we had already known it was headed that way. Anyway, she shows up with a notebook, and asks me to check it out. Turns out, she had handwritten down every single text message that I had sent to her. That was a good 250 pages long notebook. It was full. I wasn't sure how to react, so, I jokingly said something along the lines of, this is, wit, are you going to use this as evidence in some way? She got pissed and tore apart the entire book in my face. I don't know why, it was something about the way she did that got me pissed. I got up and left. We meet again later, and turns out she had rewritten the whole thing, and asked me to keep the revised version. I declined politely this time. She messages me a year later that she tore the revised notebook, 